Tonsils and adenoids are the body's first line of defense as part of the immune system. But sometimes they become more of a liability than an asset. We went to Children's Hospital of Orange County and spoke with Dr. Gurpreet Ahuja, who gives us more on tonsils and adenoids. Tonsils are small pieces of lymphatic tissue like little balls which exist in the back of our throat. In the area of the throat we call the oropharynx. And that's right behind our tongue. And uh, we have the right side of tonsil and the left side of tonsil. Uh, in medical terms they're known as palatine tonsils because they're just below the palate. Um, we have then the adenoids, which are also known as pharyngeal tonsils. These are lymphatic tissue just like the tonsils, but they exist behind the nose in the upper part of the throat called the nasopharynx. The two primary reasons when we need to consider removing the tonsils and or the adenoids are either obstruction or blockage, or number two, recurrent infections in its most severe manifestation, and large tonsils and adenoids can lead to sleep apnea. And it can be a significant cause for sleep apnea in children. Um, and under those circumstances, in order to relieve the sleep apnea or the upper airway obstruction, we have to consider removing the tonsils and adenoids. When do tonsils and adenoids become a more serious problem? Enlargement of the tonsils and adenoids if it leads to a upper airway obstruction. In the more severe manifestations of upper airway obstruction where the sleep apnea is severe, it can long term lead to strain on the heart and the lungs. It can lead to high blood pressure in the lungs. We call it pulmonary hypertension. In the less severe cases, you can have an impact on their ability to get restful sleep at night, which in turn may lead to hyperactive behavior during the day in a small percentage of those patients. In others, it may lead to excessive sleepiness during the day, failure to focus at school during the day. Sometimes we are seeing more aggressive behavior in children who are not getting sufficient sleep at nighttime because of obstruction from the large tonsils and adenoids. How common are these tonsil and adenoid problems? The problem of upper airway obstruction is rather common. Uh, there is data to suggest that one to two percent of children in the United States may have sleep disordered breathing or sleep apnea related to large tonsils and adenoids for the most part. Altogether, about 530,000 tonsillectomies with or without adenoidectomies get done in the United States every year in children 15 and under. We have much better defined criteria as to when we need to consider removal of the tonsils or tonsillectomy for recurrent infections. And the threshold we use is seven infections, sore throats, pharyngitis, tonsillitis, in a one-year period, or five episodes each year for two years, or three episodes each year for three or more years. In combination with if they are having fever, or if they're having positive strep infections, or if they're developing white uh, discharge, or, or what we call exudate on the tonsils, or associated with pain and discomfort on a repeated basis or, or in large lymph nodes in the neck. And under those circumstances, then you have to consider removing the tonsils. Dr. Ahuja discusses the difficulty of the surgery. The surgery itself takes about 30 minutes under general anesthesia. It's in the, in most healthy children, it's an outpatient surgery. It's all done through the mouth there. No cuts or stitches on the outside. Uh, blood loss during the surgery is minimal and the outcome is usually quite excellent. The surgery can be curative in between two-thirds to three-fourths of the patients who undergo the surgery in, uh, from the standpoint of relieving their obstructive symptoms or can be substantially curative in the majority, overwhelming majority if you're removing them for recurrent infections.